hit, as in take a hit. Can you take a punch, so to speak? It's the 1980s, and his name is Michael. Michael, well, Michael's a big city kind of guy, big city boy. He's a big boy. He's from the city of what they call Big Shoulders, the Windy City, Chicago. He'll tell you that it's all about his mom and his sister. His dad was never much in the picture. He said his mom was the proverbial can do and will do and does do, and she does it well. And if it hadn't been for her, he'll tell you, he doesn't make it. He said in high school, he did two things well, drink and take drugs. And as a result, he barely gets through high school. And his mom told him, because he wanted to play football in high school. And his mom told him, no, I don't know what you mean. He said, well, I think I need the discipline. She said, no, no, Michael, you'll get hurt. When you find out who this guy is, there is no way this guy gets hurt. I'm telling you, they don't even have to give him pads. That's not the problem. As a result, man, he's trying to do the best he can. He gets a scholarship to a junior college and then to Alcorn State. 6'5", 300-pound basketball player and extremely agile. As a result, man, he's doing well, and then the big hit comes. His mom's in trouble. She's had a heart attack. His world goes south. As a result, because she's everything, he quits school, goes back, he's trying to help his sister and his mom, he works for the Chicago uh, pipe company, gas company. All he does is dig ditches and trenches. They don't have a backhoe, a front-end loader, ditch witch, call it whatever you want. This man can do it all. He's so big and massive, man, he just moves it. Finally, he's got to need more money. He starts doing the, the bouncing, you know, going to work at a bar at night. People start to recognize him. Will Smith recognizes him. LL Cool J recognizes him. I have no idea who that guy is. That's not the point. But anybody that gives them that moniker, God bless you. But I digress. As a result of it, man, they start saying, man, we need you as a bodyguard. Then he becomes a bodyguard for the, <laughs> the notorious B.I.G. He dies. Michael quits. I can just tell you. As a result, man, they got to find him work. So they get him a job on a sitcom, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, for just a little bit. And then they get him a couple of jobs here and there. And then all of a sudden... They get him in the movie Talladega Nights. Then Michael gets a spot in the whole nine yards. But then the world starts opening up. Man, he's now able to take care of his family, in particular his mom. And as a result, man, he's in the movie Armageddon with Bruce Willis. He's in Scorpion King with The Rock. He, he does voiceovers. Kung Fu Panda. Okay, somebody's had to heard Kung Fu Panda. I'm just not pitching that. And he did Big Brother 1 and 2. But you know what's amazing? You do know Michael. You know him in the Green Mile as Al Coffey. He didn't want to play football because he might get hurt. He's as big as a house, my brothers and sisters in Christ. His name is Michael Duncan. My brothers and sisters in Christ, that's the gospel. That's what the good Lord's telling his apostles. Someday you're going to take a hit. You see that big massive temple? Not one stone will not be thrown to the ground. Now stop, you're first century Jew. He's taking his apostles outside the city of Jerusalem. And he's going up to what they call, there's a hill site called the Mount of Olives, near the Garden of Gethsemane. He's turning around and says, now you see the city? You can't miss the temple. The temple would take up the whole block behind it, start to drive in drugs, include this block. It would include the block of Walgreens and the hospital. That's how big the temple is. He's saying not one boulder will not be thrown to the ground. And he's saying, you need to understand this, because guess what? Not only are they going to come after me, they're going to come after you. They're going to seize you. They're going to judge you. They're going to persecute you, and it's going to be your family and your friends. You better learn to take a hit now, because you're going to be asked to take the greatest hit, martyrdom. My brother and sister Christ, remember what the temple means to a Jew. The temple means this is where God resides. Nothing's changed in 2,000 years. This is where you had to go to sacrifice. You couldn't do the animal at home. You had to come to the altar rail and hand it over. That's why you and I bring the gifts up and you hand it over the rail so that I could take it, break it, bless it, and hand it back to you. My brother and sister Christ, this was heaven on earth. So for him to say, I'm going to destroy the temple, they're thinking physically. He's saying, oh, that's going to happen. But it's also going to happen to me and it's going to happen to you. Now, brother, stop. Go back in scripture. If there is one God who knows how to take it, you can say whatever you want about Peter. Probably all true. Give him his due. 
The boy can take it. He's in a boat. First time he meets the good Lord. Lord gets in a boat. It's midnight. He's been fishing, y'all, all night. He comes back and here a carpenter gets in his boat and says, oh, we're going fishing. You can imagine the attitude. Oh, well, this is skippy. Well, why don't we just go fit? Here's the net. You want them out there? Yeah. Woo! Boat load of fish. That's exactly what happens. He drops in the middle of the boat and says, depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. He takes a hit. The next time he's in another boat, Peter doesn't learn. Lord, he's the storm coming up. I'm not going to wake him up. Would I need another boat? Please let him sleep. I got this. See a Galilee. I'm a fisherman. Within minutes. Lord, do you mind? We're about to perish. The good Lord stands and rebukes the wind. Does it strike you as unordinary? The wind is inanimate, unless somebody else is stirring it up. An animate object, the evil one. That's why the good Lord rebuked it. Man, Peter takes yet another hit. The third time he's in a boat, the good Lord is on the water, and he's telling Peter, come. Man, Peter begins to walk. He does walk on water. Make no mistake about it. Just because he had doubts and the wind was blowing, he starts to drown, and the good Lord goes and saves him. Never forget this. Peter walked on water for however short it may have been. But make sure you understand, the good Lord didn't carry him back to the boat. They walked back to the boat. Peter has not learned yet again, and this is the third time. My brother says, Christ, do you know that Christ actually called him Satan because he's trying to convince the Lord what he should or shouldn't do? He didn't say, hey, Peter, stop it. You know better. You've been with me too long. He calls him Satan. I mean, man, is that not enough to just want to climb in a hole, live under a rock? Peter doesn't listen. Most Christ, he denies our Savior three times. Did you ever hear the denial? The first one is just Christ. The next one is Christ and the boys. The next one is Christ and the boys and that whole nationality. Each time gets bigger and bigger and bigger. They said he cried so much. That even though he lived for another 33 years, the creases in his cheeks and the tears were still there. Peter is crucified upside down and for three hours preaches the gospel. Upside down. Stand on your head for a couple of minutes and tell me how you feel. You can say what you want about Peter. That boy can take a hit. You're telling me that when he went out in public and he preached to the masses, that somebody didn't stand up and say, well, aren't you a piece of work? You're judging me, Peter. I hear it all the time. He's saying, no, I'm just discerning the act. I'm just telling you what's acceptable and what is not. What's in Scripture and what is not. The Holy Spirit has come upon me. My brother in Christ, there would be always somebody. But that boy can take a hit. Well, guess what? Here we sit some 2,000 years later. Can we take a hit? Can you take a hit for your faith? Can you take a hit for saying that you're Catholic? Well, let's see my brothers and sisters in Christ, when they turn to you and say, let us pray, my brother in Christ, and they look to you, will you make the sign of the cross? Knowing full well, nobody else may do it. Knowing full well that they're going to come look for you afterwards. Will you break out in the Hail Mary? Or are you going to turn around and say, man, I don't want to do that because I'm going to upset them, and yet we'll cast a shadow upon her. My brother and sister in Christ, if they decide to bow their heads before a meal, will you make the sign of the cross even though nobody else begins to pray? Will you ask them, let's say a prayer before a meal? Can you take that hit? Will you be able to say when they say, are you Christian? You say, yeah, absolutely, I'm Catholic. Or are you going to stay away from them and say, no, 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 I'm, I'm Christian. We don't, we don't need that. If you do not acknowledge him in public, he will not acknowledge you and I before the Father. How many times must he tell you and I this? Will you wear a medal and let everybody know it's blessed? Will you put a statue in your yard so that everybody can see? Quote that you worship statues, end quote. I mean, really? We worship plaster. I mean, do we not have an intellect? I mean, when they bowed before the crucifix that was in the desert and it was the gold one with the serpent because it had been bitten by vipers, I mean, did they worship the, that, that statue or the, the person that made it, i.e. God? My brothers Christ, are you willing to defend the faith? And say that we venerate the Blessed Mother, not adore her? Are you willing to say that you understand the sacrament? And if you don't understand why we do what we do, stop blaming the church and saying, well, Father, my, no, I went to Catholic schools my whole life. Y'all, they didn't teach me anything. So what you doing now? Laying on your hands? Why are you laying on my leg? What? It, it's our soul. It's your soul. 
You're responsible for your soul. Ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. When I'm asking you, are you able and willing to take a hit, knowing that you will alienate family and friends and relatives? Because at some point, my brother and sister in Christ, you and I are going to have to acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Messiah and his church as well. And I'm begging you not to back up from that fight. It'll be the fight that you live to regret. And I leave you in the words of Randall Tex Cobb. You may not know him. You think John Coffey was a big boy? You should see this guy. He was a fighter, a prize fighter, fought Muhammad Ali. You know, the tune-up fight that you have before you fight the main, the main guy months later. Tex Cobb is a walking punching bag. You could knock him out with a bulldozer. As a result, he fights Muhammad Ali. He's in the ring when the bell rings, and he's there with Muhammad Ali. He doesn't even go to the hospital after the fight. Like he said, it's not like my IQ was going to get any better anyway. As a result, he's going to be an interview. The reporter said, Tex, I don't think you hit Ali the whole fight. He said, I did too. I hit him twice. Once when we touched gloves, and when he turned around, I hit him before the fight started. He said, man, Tex, he says, man, he said, no, no, look, he said, Mr. Reporter, you have no idea what you're talking about. He said, have you ever been in the ring? He said, it's not tennis where I, you know, I miss the ball or I hit it out. It's love 15. I miss a punch. I better be able to take a hit or I'm going to get knocked out. My brother and sister Christ, take the hit. I promise you, your reward in heaven will be greater than you could ever imagine. The blessing upon you will be twice. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.